Well, space scientists have discovered a black hole. Not any ordinary garden variety black hole, but a black hole that they say is not only massive, but also the oldest black hole they have ever discovered. Well, as we like to do each Sunday morning, we welcome National Geographic astronomy columnist Andrew Fizekas to help us wrap our minds around this discovery. Andrew, good morning. First, remind us what a black hole is. So these are the most massive objects in the universe. Uh, they can weigh millions, hundreds of millions of times uh, more massive than our sun. And uh, they are formed at the end point, the end of a life of a very massive star or multiple stars. And in this case, what we're looking at is a what's categorized as a supermassive black hole that weighs in at a whopping 800 million times the mass of our sun. Uh, Andrew, I should point out to our viewers that uh, what we're showing them right now, I think I can pretty safely assume, computer animated images of what uh, is conceived this black hole looks like. So, so you've, you've pointed out a couple of the features that makes this black hole particularly different size, uh, aside from its size. How might scientists use this information? Well, really, we're probing the edge of the universe. And one of the special hallmarks of this particular uh, black hole, this uh, predator, it lives at the literally at the edge of the universe. We're looking back in time at the oldest uh, black hole that we've ever seen. It's literally only uh, 690 million uh, years after the Big Bang. So we're looking back in time 13 billion years into the past of the of the universe so we're literally uh getting a glimpse at at the formation of the first galaxy that hosts this uh, black hole and scientists are still puzzled at how such a large massive black hole can exist at the very beginning of the universe and it's something that they still have to grapple with wow that is some grappling. So could that conceivably, Andrew, change how we understand the core fundamentals of the universe? Well, I think what it's going to do is it's going to help us understand how galaxies like our own home Milky Way galaxy formed. We have a supermassive black hole at the heart of our own galaxy, too. Today, most galaxies that we see in the universe, in the modern universe today, have supermassive black holes at their core. And so this is going to help, well, this discovery is going to help us understand the evolution, the birth and evolution of galaxies, including our own Milky Way. Huh. I want to talk about something that's coming up this week, a Gemini meteor shower that's happening Wednesday. What more can you tell us in the uh, less than a minute, I guess, I suppose, uh, that we have left to talk about it? Yeah, so what people should be aware of, we're going to have a great uh, na Nature's Celestial Fireworks show, the best one of the entire year. Just make sure you bundle up. You'll see shooting stars anywhere from 30 to up to 100 per hour of meteors. This will be on Wednesday night into Thursday morning. So if you stay up late night Wednesday night and into the early morning pre-dawn hours of Thursday, you'll be able to see anywhere between 30 to 100 shooting stars per hour, depending on how much light pollution of where you are. If you're stuck in the city, you'll see closer to 30. If you're out in the, in the countryside, you'll see it more closer to 100. No telescopes or binoculars, just your eyes, and make sure you get a clear view of the overhead skies. And it's a great show. It's called the Geminid Meteor Shower. It's the best meteor shower of the year. Don't miss it. No moon in the sky either, so we'll have dark skies. Perfect viewing. Just bundle up, bring along a thermos of hot <laughs> chocolate, and you've got <laughs> natural entertainment. Plenty of wishes. <laughs> what, what's, what's that, my friend? Plenty of wishes to and be made for this shower. That's right. With this shower, <laughs> you're going to have plenty of opportunities to wish upon a falling star. National Geographic astronomy columnist Andrew Fisekis, thanks a lot, my friend. Clear skies.